Right. Good. Oh gosh, that's loud. Good, mo good morning, everybody. Um, right. This is the cabinet mem uh, cabinet meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council. My name's Bridget Smith, and I'm the leader of the council. Um, we've got uh, people attending the meeting, and some other people attending remote remotely. Uh, so only members of the cabinet who are here in person will be able to vote. But it's normal procedure, actually, that we take votes by, by affirmation, and we'll probably continue, continue with that tradition. Um, if you are in person in the room and you'd like to speak, please just raise your hand. And if you are attending remotely, can you please indicate in the chat that you'd like to speak? And Councillor Bill Handley will uh, let me know who is waiting to speak, and we'll take you in uh, the, best or the best order that we can. So I'm aware that we've got one cabinet member attending remotely, and that's Councillor Brian Milnes. Morning. Um, and we have a number of other members and officers attending. So, uh, so welcome, welcome to everybody. Okay, so we start off with apologies for absence. And I think John, uh, Jonathan, who is uh, at his desk, will tell us who the apologies are from. Thank you, Leader. Uh, I can confirm we've received apologies from Councillor Peter MacDonald, the lead cabinet member for business recovery and skills. And we've also received apologies from Councillor Grenville Chamberlain, the chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee, and Councillor Judith Griffith, the vice chair of the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Thank you very much. I don't think we're aware of any other apologies, are we? No. Okay, good, thank you. Um, so, item three, are there any declarations of interest pertaining to the items on the agenda today? No? And moving on to the minutes of the previous meeting, which are on pages one to four. Um, and these are the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 1st of October. So, I will be, uh, so members are asked to approve the minutes of meeting. And I'm going to move the approval of these minutes as a correct record, and I think Councillor Neil Goff is going to second them. Uh, are there any matters arising from the minutes? No? Okay. So do members agree to approve the minutes? Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? Okay, so Cabinet therefore agrees the approval of the minutes as a correct record by affirmation. Okay, so we have we move on to public questions, and we have one question from Mr. Chris Thornhill. And regrettably, Mr. Thornhill um, cannot be in attendance at the meeting, and I don't know whether he's online. I can't see him there, but uh, okay, that's that's fine. Anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Thornhill, for um, submitting a question to us. It's quite a long question, but it relates to planning and enforcement issues on Hayden Way in Willingham. Uh, and the full, quest, the full uh, text of the question is available in your packs and also on the website. Uh, so, in res so I'll respond to the question. Um, so in response, thank you for your question, Mr. Thornhill. I, I am already aware of the issue, having been briefed by my colleague, Councillor Handley, and by the Chief Executive and both have met you and the residents with a number of planning officers and have subsequently been working to provide answers to your questions. I'm therefore confident that it is being dealt with at a very senior level within the council already, and I will continue to receive briefings from Councillor Handley and the Chief Executive. So thank you very much indeed. So moving on to um, item six, which are issues arising from the Scrutiny and Overview Committee. Now, unfortunately, neither the chair nor the vice chair uh, can be present today, but we thank them and the Scrutiny and Overview for committee, committee for the work they've done. Um, but I'd just like to bring in uh, Mr. Peter Maddox, um, because I gather there's a couple of inaccuracies in the papers in relation to the uh, scrutiny's um, time looking at the, the medium-term financial strategy. So if I could bring in Peter Maddox, please, to tell us what the corrections need to be. 
So on the supplementary agenda, page one, <clears throat> towards the bottom of the page, it says nature of the savings outlined in the report. And point A should read, the head of finance confirmed that the predicted savings were ongoing at this stage. Thank and you. then on the next item at the top of page two, uh, and again, it's point A under business rates. Um, that should read, um, the head of finance said that South Cambridgeshire District Council is in the top 10 for business rates growth above the baseline. And then finally on, uh, it, towards the bottom of that page, yeah, so towards the bottom of that page, entitled council tax, point C there, should read increased income from the counter fraud project. So that's council, increased council tax income from the counter fraud project. And that's being discussed later in the agenda. Thank you. Okay, that's all of them. Thank you very much indeed. So Jonathan, if you could note those corrections in the minutes, please. That would be very helpful. Um, are there any questions in relation to uh, the report from scrutiny and overview? Nobody online? No? Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, so we will note, note the report from scrutiny and overview and thank them again for their, for their diligence. And moving on to item seven, which is the health and wellbeing strategy. Uh, and Councillor Bill Handley is going to introduce the report and move the recommendations. And I am very pleased to be able to uh, second it. So over to you, Councillor Handley. Thank you, Leader. Um, this is the biannual report to Cabinet on the progress of our health and wellbeing activities. Um, if I can start with the community response to the pandemic and the community's team are, are now working on plans to support ongoing volunteer-led community support to strengthen resilience post-COVID. Uh, this type of work has also done in other local authorities. It's known by them as community-led planning, although I must say I prefer to use community-led plans uh, to avoid confusion. Um, Projects to support the mental and physical health of, health of our residents have been central to the Council's activities. And uh, during the period of this report, the Wild Minds Mental Health Programme for Young People has been extremely successful. And um, officers are in discussion with Wimpole Hall uh, with the intention of extending the programme uh, to offer courses in different outdoor activities to those that are offered at Milton Country Park. Um, things such as tree planting, for example. This will not only extend our reach across the district, but it, it, it provides an alternative type of outdoor therapy for young people. And we, we very much, we would very much like to continue to this work next year. Further work on young people has recently been launched, uh, aimed at charities and organizations working to improve outcomes for young people. Um, and although the cu current pro project is a pilot to see the kind of ideas that come forward, it is planned to extend this into our service support grants scheme um, as a new theme within the service support grants from 2023. On the physical health side, and thanks to money from Sport England and the government, we've injected substantial funding into the dual use leisure facilities that we are associated with, which have been very badly hit by the pandemic. Uh, these monies are, are intended to help refresh and upgrade interiors and equipment and uh, get people moving again. The mobile or community warden scheme has been strengthened uh, with three year funding contracts now available, giving security both to the clients um, and the staff who care for them. And we are working um, more closely than ever with other authorities in order to deliver good services, um, good examples of which are the Healthy You Lifestyle, lifestyle Service um, and the training of volunteer walk leaders to set up community walks into which GPs can refer patients 
uh, and in-school nutrition well-being programs. Um, all of those things, are, um, are we've also been uh, helping various projects restart after the pandemic and uh, obviously recovery from the pandemic is uh, central to our efforts right now. Um, and we've been offering over the summer holiday sports schemes and mini Olympics camps and helping um, to improve and extend community facilities. Uh, Leader, this update is for information, um, but uh, I hope you and the rest of the cabinet will join me in congratulating officers on the amount of work that they've delivered uh, on health and well-being They've done so much during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I would very much like to thank them for all their efforts. It really has been exemplary. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I think it's been it's been fabulous what's been going on in response directly to COVID, but all the other work that has kept kept on as well. And uh, it's great to hear that we're building on all the success of the uh, community-led support and COVID uh, move, moving forward. And that, I think that's something we're discussing with partner councils and the county council as well. Um, thank you, Councillor Handley. Um, yeah, Councillor Williams. Yes, thank, thank you, um, thank you, Leader. I, can I can I add my um, you know congratulations to the officers for the, for the tremendous work and the way that we've rolled this out and um, and the increase in in effort that we're seeing in our communities, and particularly in Fallbourne, the community rewarding scheme. Um, wasn't in full boom before, and um, and it, it it shows that you know we, we used to have a postcode lottery on this, and now we're getting towards um, rolling this out across the district, which has to be good. Um, can I also ask that we add um, the income maximisation officer uh, to to our list of achievements because um, this person um, we we have introduced to help families with. Uh, their income in difficult times and obviously that then has a an impact on well-being and mental health if, if we're able to help families with their uh, with their bills so um, I think that's also a very important piece of uh, delivery that this council has done um, to help our uh, residents in these very difficult economic times thank you very much yes that's a point very well very well made uh, councillor bachelor uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I too would like to welcome this and um, note the impressive amount of work being, being done. Um, in particular, um, the dual use uh, funding is uh, extremely welcome to the um, village colleges. Uh, as you know, we, ha we have the village college ethos of being at the centre of many of our communities and maintaining um, the sports facilities is a particular difficulty at the moment. Um, and so uh, this uh, funding is, is very welcome. I hope we might be able to um, widen it in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I think sp uh, sports facilities have really struggled, but actually they've never been so badly needed as they are now to ensure people's... Uh, health whilst whilst we're still in the heart of a pandemic um any other um uh, Can councillor hawkins uh thank you leader um i just want to say thank you um as well to the um officers and everyone who's been involved with this but in particular i just want to mention the wild minds um scheme which has been very very successful and oversubscribed um very often we find our young people kind of tend to be left out in things, you know, they don't have where to go, where to meet and stuff like that. And, and as someone who has a teenager myself, um, I know how difficult uh, it's been for them. So this program, um, I just want to say you know, well done to all involved and uh, hopefully we can carry on doing good stuff like this. Thank you. Thank you. We, you know, we are potentially facing a pandemic of mental, mental health, mental illness as well coming out of COVID. So, uh, I'm delighted that we've been so successful in this. Um, if there's nobody else in the room, uh, I'll come, come to Councillor Anna Bradman now online. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, so thank you very much for that report. And it's so encouraging to hear of all of the positive things that are being doing to help keep people healthy in their communities. 
Um, and in that regard, I wanted to draw our attention to um, the paragraph 24, financial, which is uh, where we're told these courses have proved very popular and the initial outcomes have been very positive. I'm sure they have and options for continuing this project are being explored. So firstly, I wanted to say absolutely, as Councillor Hawkins has said, how very positive that Wild Minds um, project has been at Milton Country Park. And I very much want to encourage us to seek, make every effort to seek funding in order to enable it to continue whilst also expanding into Wimpole Hall. Um, because you will appreciate if anybody has been to Milton Country Park that it is extremely heavily used. Uh, it has a very dense local population, both in the city and in South Cams, and you'd be surprised actually the distances that people come to use the facilities at Milton Country Park. Uh, and as a result, it's really quite heavily used. So we need to support it and help it to um, support the people who want to come and use it to be out in the open air. Um, but also, um, it's an essential green space. Um, for those reasons. There aren't very many, we don't have, it's the only country park, um, I believe, in South Cams. And so we really need to help it um, maintain the courses and facilities that it offers. Uh, so I just wanted to, it's really an a, a appeal and to, to make sure that we do make the money available. Um, because for example, those are the kinds of courses that um, you know the chairman's charity centre 33 might might choose to assist you know and and refer people into when they're having struggles with mental problems so um, I really support this and hope we can find money to go on and expand into Wimpole as well thank you thank you yes I'm delighted it's going to Wimpole they do have a vicious park run I can vouch for that it uh, seems to be all uphill um, I'm sure the one at Milton's a bit, a bit kinder, but more of a drive. Okay, so uh, Councillor Claire Daunton next. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I hope that you can hear me. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Good, thank you. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I, I also would like to add my thanks to the officers for this report. Um, and I'd particularly like to point to the community chest funding. Um, and the particular COVID funding, which I think was very welcome um, and really helped communities to get back up and running after the um, the worst of the pandemic and, and particularly uh, able to bring communities together as um, set out in the report. Um, and I, I'm really glad that uh, the, the Grants Committee can, can do this kind of thing. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you, Leader. Um, I would I'd first like to welcome much of the report. I think health and wellbeing is something that we all take very seriously and, and needs addressing for many in the district. Um, I just wanted to put a little bit of a, a plea and awareness around the um, initiatives in Wimpole. Um, as you may have seen, Leader, um, being from, from our part of the district, we ha now have a lot of double yellow lines in Arrington because of the parking issues in relation to Wimple Hall. Um, so any initiatives that the council's looking at to, to do, could we please make sure that we do take into consideration the parking elements um, because, because there is a, an access and because Wimple Hall is now incredibly expensive to actually go to, I think it's 18 pounds for an adult just to enter the grounds. So um, there has been a lot of issues in that area. So I'm just asking that's taken into account in any planning that we do for Wimpole. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes, so I am well aware of the parking issues in uh, Arrington and uh, we will bring the, the wrath of the residents of Arrington down on our heads if we increase, increase the problems there. Uh, so affordability and access to, uh, to services is very much at the fore forefront of our minds. So thank you for pointing, pointing that out. So I don't think there's anyone else. Um, so I, I, since I'm going to be seconding this, I think for a council of our size to have a 60-point action plan for health and well-being 
is deeply impressive. And my thanks in particular to Leslie McFarlane for the report she's written and the considerable amount of work she puts, puts into this. Uh, so it's, it's very, very exciting, and I'm very pleased to see us moving forward. It's not a static document. I'm sure it's going to be changing all the time, uh, and uh, we will keep on responding to whatever new health and well-being needs emerge as, as we come out of the pandemic. Uh, so the Cabinet's recommended to A, approve the business case shown in Appendix A, providing agreement to proceed with the project, and B, delegate authority for signing any required agreements as part of the project to the Chief Finance Officer in consultation with the lead, lead Cabinet Member for Finance. So, do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Anyone wish to vote against? Anyone wish to abstain? No? Nope. Okay, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And moving on to the North East Cambridge in principle commitment to delivery of AAP. And Councillor John Williams is going to introduce the report and move the recommendation. And Councillor Toomey Hawkins is going to. So I've jumped. I'm sorry, I've jumped. I'm just backtracked there. Sorry. <laughs> Obviously, don't want to talk about council tax compliance. Back to item eight. Sorry about that. Cambridgeshire Council Tax Compliance and Counter Fraud Initiative. So, Councillor John Williams again is going to uh, introduce the report and move the recommendation. And Councillor Neil Goff is going to second it. Th thank you, Leader. Uh, council tax discounts, exemptions, and reductions in South Cambridgeshire total over £17 million per annum. We carry out checks to ensure that any reductions are correct based on the information available. Invariably, however, there will be a proportion that are claimed incorrectly or for longer than applicable. We believe that enhancing the processes already in place to ensure there is a more robust and uniform council tax compliance and counter fraud strategy across Cambridgeshire, we can even better protect us from fraud and compliance issues arising from discounts, exemptions and reductions being claimed incorrectly. I don't have to remind you that whilst the council benefits from very high collection rates for council tax currently, any discount, reduction or exemption claimed incorrectly has a direct impact on the council tax base, negatively impacting the ability to fund local services. Revenues and benefits managers from across Cambridgeshire meet regularly to discuss topical issues and share best practice as part of the county revenues group. Periodic reviews are carried out by all billing authorities to ensure that council tax discounts and exemptions granted are being claimed legitimately. However, the frequency of reviews and resource committed to them currently varies between councils. Billing authorities also participate in the National Fraud Initiative, a national scheme where councils provide various data sets to the Cabinet Office annually, which are cross-checked, and any inconsistencies are reported for further investigation. Variable levels of success are recorded from such strategies, mainly due to the fact that data is reviewed only annually, and the CRG is keen to explore new and innovative ways of implementing an effective compliance and counter-fraud regime. It is of benefit to all residents that the Council maintains a robust compliance regime to ensure any such reductions are awarded correctly, and the proposals contained within the business case in Appendix A seek to enhance existing arrangements across the county furthering this aim. So I ask Cabinet to approve proceeding with the business case as provided in Appendix A to procure data matching software to compare a range of data sets held across the county-wide county and district councils in order to detect anomalies and the sharing of the costs and gains between the parts. If agreed, it is proposed that the new procedures will take effect in quarter four, 2021, for initially a three-year agreement. Whilst the exact database data sets to be matched will need to be determined as part of the project, it is proposed that it would include information such as benefits, electoral roll, housing waiting lists, blue badges, concessionary bus passes, payroll, and deceased persons. In addition to the proposal for matching data, the business case also contains a financial proposal where both the costs and gains of the initiative are shared. Currently, the administrative costs for council tax falls to the billing authority. The business case proposes 
that the costs of this initiative are spread across all of the preceptors, but excluding parishes, proportionately in accordance with their current share of the council tax. Likewise, it is proposed that any additional council tax generated by the initiative will be shared on different proportions. The current position sees the county council retain at least 68% of the council tax collected in each district, with the district councils retaining around 12% on average the four parish precepts. The business case proposes that where additional council tax is generated as a result of the additional activity set out in the business case, the county council will pay 25% of their proportion to the district councils. If you look at the table in paragraph 7.1 of the business case, the cost to us for the three years is estimated to be just over £52,000, while assuming a combined average saving of 3%, of total council tax reductions as detailed in paragraph 8.1, the total anticipated net savings accrued to this council could be over £110,300. That's in paragraph 8.5. If, if Cabinet agrees to participate in the project as detailed in the business case, Cabinet are also asked to delegate authority for the signing of any agreements required as part of this project to the Chief Financial Officer in conjunction with myself. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Goff, do you want to speak at this point? Yes, I'd just like to support this recommendation. It seems like it's a good example of looking at other areas of uh, the country for best practice and taking good ideas and uh, bringing them into Cambridgeshire. Um, and. Uh, applying them so it looks like a very sensible approach towards the sort of uh, allocation of the, the costs and the benefits so um, I, I would uh, support it it's a very good piece of work thank you and are there any questions from members of cabinet no have we any questions from anybody else no okay so uh, the recommendation is at, uh, at three and that's that the uh, business case at Appendix A um, is approved and that de we delegate authority for signing any required agreements as part of the project to the Chief Finance Officer in consultation with the lead Cabinet Member for Finance. So, do members agree with the proposal? Agree. Does anyone wish to vote against? Anyone wish to abstain? So, Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. Okay, right. I just need to take a step back because I'm afraid I jumped over my pages. So I just need to take a step back to the health and well-being strategy because the recommendations I read out for those were the ones I've just read out for item eight, the council tax compliance and counter fraud initiative. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to take the vote again just to be absolutely sure we've done this right for item seven, the health and well-being strategy update. So the recommendation was set out at paragraph seven of the report. So let me just go back to. Um, yep, so, right, so paragraph seven. So cabinet's asked to note the contents of the report and the delivery of activities and services which promote physical and mental health and well-being with consideration for the impacts the pandemic has had on delivery of some projects. I'm right there, Rory? Yep. Okay, that's fine. So sorry. Can I just... Uh, do members agree with the proposal? Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against the proposal? Anyone wish to abstain? Okay, that's lovely. Apologies for that. Getting ahead of myself twice today. Right, so moving on to item nine now, which is the North East Cambridge in principle commitment to delivery of AAP. So Councillor John Williams is going to introduce the report and move the recommendation and Councillor Toomey Hawkins is going to second it, I believe. So over to you, Councillor Williams again. Thank you, Leader. Um, you may ask why the lead member for planning is not moving um, the recommendations on what is seemingly a planning matter. This is because you are being asked to approve the possible use of our compulsory purchase powers, which is a financial matter, a practical tool for our toolkit. 
to enable us to deliver, in principle, the Area Action Plan for North East Cambridge, not the planning policy behind it. The North East Cambridge site has a number of landowners, and we have to show that we have the ability or willingness to facilitate land assembly or relocation to deliver the AAP in due course. The decision to acquire land or dispose of land uh, or to use compulsory purchase orders, um, if necessary, would be subject to a separate report which would outline the special circumstances, the case for council intervention and the resource implications. So I ask Cabinet to approve the recommendations to show our commitment to the delivery of the North East Cambridge Area Action Plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hawkins, do you want to comment? Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, I'm supporting um, this recommendation simply because um, we need to be able to ensure that when the time comes, we are able to put together um, a new uh, district that works and works well. And that means that we should be able to put together land as we need it. Um, and so this will help us to do that. Obviously, our goal is for the health and well-being of the people who are going to live there. And this too will help us do that. So I second this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions from anyone else in Cabinet? And any questions from anyone else? Uh, Councillor Anna Bradman. Thank you, Leader. Um, I hope people won't mind if I recall um, the discussion that we had at Scrutiny and Overview about this, which chimes very much with what Councillor John Williams and Councillor Dr Toomey Hawkins have said, which is that we feel it's so important that the North East Cambridge area is brought forward in a measured and um, well-planned way and that things are done at the right time and that we create the infrastructure in the right order for this really important development. And that's why Scrutiny and Overview were very supportive of this document to make sure that we can do everything in the right order at the right time. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Williams, do you want to comment on that? No, thank, thank you for making that point. Any more, any further questions? No? Okay, so right, I'll try and get the, uh, the recommendations right this time. Uh, so they're set out in paragraph six and seven of the report. Cabinet's um, requested to note that the North East Cambridge Area Action Plan is contingent upon the separate development control order being undertaken by Anglia Water for the relocation of wastewater treatment plant being approved and B, agree the Council's committed to the delivery of the North East Cambridge Area Action Plan, including land disposal or assembly, and subject to formal adoption of the Area Action Plan in due course to use its compulsory purchase order powers if required. So do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? No. Jolly good, thank you. Uh, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. So we've now reached the end of our agenda. Gosh, in record time. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, those people who uh, dialed in today. I uh, note the next meeting of Cabinet scheduled to take place on Monday the 6th of December 2021 at 10 o'clock, which seems like a tremendously long time away. And we've all got a lot of Christmas shopping to do in the interim. So thank you very much, everybody.